Okay, we're here with another photo stamping scene, or photo for a photo stamping scene. This one's a little bit more, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit harder to, to work around than some of the more kind of generic, somewhat neutral light in here. I mean, there's, there's a range of uh, tones in here from dark to light, okay, like on some of these, but this one's really quite definitive. It looks like something where a photograph's been taken from a, an airplane or something like that. I love doing that type of thing too, but um, I don't know. So we're looking at a, an above cloud type of formation here, but if I'm going to stamp over the top of it, it's not going to represent something from, I don't know, whatever, 50,000 feet up or something like that. It'll just kind of give me an existing um, kind of tonal color and value scheme to kind of work around. Now this one's going to be a little bit harder to do if I'm not just going with solid imageries like solid branches or trees or something like that in here. You know, more silhouette based. I'm going to try it with the same covered bridge that I did in this scene, but I thought I would combine kind of the, the photo stamping idea with my sleepy hollow format because this is already fairly dark so I think I'm going to have to darken this um, when I do my additional color uh, embellishments. Alright so I'm going to start off with this one. Now I chose this photograph for doing this. I wanted to experiment anyway but this area down here is fairly light and I thought I could use that for my kind of roadway down here. It's not all going to be in light though because it's dark down here but I just figured oh well that'll just be in shadow. Alright now this is just a piece of rubber and I don't have it indexed on this side but this is what I do. Okay, That's my opening and that's kind of the key portion of that stamp um, in terms of the image. It's the opening. It's the thing that draws you in. So I'm just going to put my finger right there on top of this point right there. I mean, it's not exactly, but I'll roughly know where to kind of position my opening there. Now, on that opening, I want it to be in um, a fairly light area. So, you know, I can see that cloud was back there and my opening will be right here. So that portion of it at least will still be in the light. Oops, I just rocked this thing. I hope that didn't uh, um, distort my imagery, although it's going to be fairly dark, so if it blurs out a little bit, no big deal. All right, now, big stamps, you always want to give, you know, full pressure. Don't just press down like this, because you're not pressing in the middle, so press in the middle. So go left, you know, middle, right, top, and bottom. Okay, now I'm still getting familiar with photo stamping, so I want to make sure that this dye ink transfers completely. You wouldn't think dye based inks would work on um, photographic prints, but they do. All right, now see where all that sky is showing through those trees? And I get some of that blue in the, um, the bridge, right? So that's the type of thing that you have to work around. Um, and with and some stamps um, and backgrounds a lot more so than others. Okay. All right. So that when I rocked it, it kind of gave me a, um, a little bit of a thicker impression. All right. You can't really tell too much, but I can tell. But like I said, you know, by the time you kind of add things in with your additional coloring and embellishments and toning and so on and so forth. Um, that shouldn't pose any kind of problem. If I've designed these stamps right, and I hope I have, um, we can work around just about anything. It's the whole kind of point of it. When I'm designing stamps, I know that I'm going to be the one that's using them more than anyone, so believe me, I don't want a bunch of tedium, and I want these uh, stamps and images and the entire process to go very, very seamlessly and easy. Not into uh, creating a you know, ton of extra work and or frustration for anyone. 
It should be just pure joy. <laughs> right? I know, when we're experimenting around like that, and you know what I mean? When I'm doing like things like this that I've never done before, or completely different formats, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, interesting, to say the least. But, with this photo stamping kind of process, I've been really pleasantly surprised. Okay, now, it's hard to tell where the forms are in this kind of open type of design. If they were solid pine trees, no problem. It's very easy to tell because it would just be solid black, right? But when you're working with kind of open formats like this, what you do is you just look for kind of some of these darker areas, okay? You see these darker areas within the trees and everything like that, okay? Those are the types of areas that I'm going to be addressing with my toning, okay? And let me show you what I mean by that. So you don't have to know anything conceptually, okay? I want you to be more kind of visual um, when you're approaching just stamping in general, okay? And what I'm looking for are the darker areas within my forms, okay? So this one right here, of course, is indexed on the wood mounted stamp, but we can see these kind of darker areas in here. And it's a little bit harder to tell when you stamp it out over the top of a photograph because you already have all these, you know, background forms showing through there. So what we're just going to do is we're just going to reiterate things. You don't have to reinvent the entire wheel or get confused. Just in general, this is your covered bridge right here, right? And we can see where I have utilized them in these two scenes before. See, I want it to be fairly light. I mean, the side of it is in shadow, but here's this light area down here, okay? Right here, there's a little bit of a light area. This was stamped on top of a photograph, so there's a lot of gray in here, so this would be gray. But I've kept it fairly light by making the area around it darker so that it makes creates a visual lead-in going to the background. Now this one right here, see, I, this was a little bit lighter and I had that heavy shade down here from the photograph, but I'm going to try to retain that lighter area in there, okay? So, what does that mean? I'll just tone in around the side and I'll leave that light, okay? If we tone it all out, we won't be able to see it and it will no longer be a focal point, all right? So, this is just your black ink right here. Now this one I'm not going with a bunch of color because, you know, the scene, um, uh, the photograph itself was fairly dark, okay? But it doesn't mean tone in everything, you know? Do, do it very lightly at a time, so it's like you're just churning up the, uh, uh, the values just ever so slightly at a time, okay? Now see this, I'm just kind of gently tapping this. I am using black, but when you use it like this, you're just putting on a very light gray, right? Because it's such a dry version of it. Now if I want to go darker, then I just stay in a given area a little bit longer. Don't squeeze it like that because you don't get like hard edges like that. So we build up tone like this, nice and gradually. So you can go with like a 5% gray, 10% gray, 15% gray, 20% gray. You'll never have kind of any type of precarious type of um, process if you just build things up ever so slightly. It's when, pe when it's sometimes, we, when, now this is using black, but a lot of times, like if I'm doing color work, I start with lighter colors to begin with. And I know how to do that and what to expect, but sometimes if people are doing it for the first time, they're going with a really light blue and they go like that, and it's a 5% of that light blue where they, they can barely see, so they start pounding, you know, like that to get more, okay? But just kind of go work through the same process. It'll build up, but uh, remember, it'll only get as dark as the color that you're using. So, even so, just build up your gradu gra uh, gradations nice and uh, controlled. All right, now kind of going into these trees up here. Uh, maybe I will go in with a little bit of color into them. It looks maybe a little bit anemic just using this gray. All right, now see this covered bridge right here? See if I put a little bit of color in the back of them like this. 
makes that area pop out. So see the bridge is starting to stand out a little bit more, right? Now on three-dimensional forms, like this right here, you can see this is white right here, right? It's the same color as this white, but look at this. If I go like this, this part's in shade, right? Or I can go like this. This is being toplet, this is in sh uh, light, and this is in shade, right? It's the vertical edges. So where are the vertical edges on this covered bridge? It's this whole side panel, right? So what I can do is I can put a little tone into it. See, I'm just gradually building up, or incrementally, or whatnot. And now, suddenly, this form looks a little bit more three-dimensional because it's being top-lit. So the sides and the top aren't treated as the same, all right? I like to put a little bit of shadow under my forms, like that. It's starting to get fairly dark, so at some point in time, I just, I don't kind of stick to the the scheme so much. I just kind of go off on my own because it's, it's a little bit harder to tell, especially on this photograph now. And remember, I haven't done something like this on this. I don't think I've done anything on a real definitive photograph like this with hard edges and um, a lot of changes in color scheme. You know, we had light blue, sunsetty kind of twilight pink in here and whatnot. But everything's looking a little bit more terrestrial down here. It's really getting quite dark though, <laughs> of course, but um, the sky now is the only thing. You know, the thing that I le has been left unstamped is really the thing that's really showing now. Okay. One of the things about this type of thing, I mean, if you have the photograph, you can do it again, but I would say for the most part, I'm going to do some of that ripped paper towel mask in here and put some texture into this grass. Um, but I was going to say, when you're doing these this photo stamping type of thing, um, just because the existing background, you know, of the photo and the forms within the photo, you're really going to get a different result every time. Okay, see I'm kind of putting this little texture in this grass, adding some variation down there, instead of it all just being kind of a uniform gradation. See that right down there? It's a, kind of a nice kind of a texture for this uh, piece. And you can do that all over it. Maybe back in here, there's a little bit of grass to each side of the uh, the bridge. Or the road to the bridge, I should say. dreary looking um, composition, but that's what I'm going for in this sleepy hollow photo stamping piece. I'm not looking for a uh, kind of bright and cheery. <laughs> I guess you could do it, you know, it could be a, a cute, you know, sleepy hollow or something like that. Make it a real fun Thing. I don't know how you get around the uh, the headless aspect to make it look a little bit more friendly. I guess if it was real cartoony looking. Okay. All right. Let's, well, I was going to say, I was going to add a little bit more ink in there. Now, I, I mean, I did that with dye-based ink. It was just the same ink that I stamped everything out in. But, I mean, you could just color it in with, like, Copics or whatever. Now, I'm going to try that now. The thing that um, kind of flashed in my head was I thought I was at, going to add in some dye-based green. I mean, I could. Like this peeled paint right here. Something kind of aged and 
older looking, okay? But I don't know what occurred to me was, ah, why do that? Just just go on straight with the uh, the alcohol markers. So if you have like some Copics or something like that. Actually, that looks pretty good. <laughs> These aren't instructional videos. Some of them are. Like if I do a stamp along or something like that. Uh, quick scenes, you know. They're, you know, I, I know where I'm going on those ones, but on these ones you're really getting a <laughs> kind of a. Uh, it's just like a webcam of you know my experimentation center, aka my studio or whatever. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. I'm adding a little tinge of green in here, but I'm retaining some areas of light, meaning just don't tone everything out uniformly, okay? You know, do, don't do things exactly the same everywhere. Uh, that, oh, I need a clean applicator. This one right here they sent to me with the little part that's kind of melted or something like that. I'm just going to use it like this. Okay, this is some walnut stain right here. We'll add a little bit of a brown tone. Looks like I'm in need of a re-inker for this walnut stain. Which I've had for many many years, so it does hold quite a bit of ink. I don't think I got the reinker. I, I did order some reinkers recently, but didn't get one for this one. Okay, so I'm just kind of adding some brown here. Like a tinge of some brown. See that? It's a little bit different. I can put some on the roof. Let's put it in just part of it, okay? So we'll say the roof is in shade back here, but it's in light up here. How's that? Okay. All right. Let's do some coloring. Now I'm really enjoying this entire process um, of coloring because I'm not like a color, like a marker specialist or you know what I mean? Or not a special, but not even, I wouldn't say I'm a competent colorer, colorist with pens at least, just because I haven't done too much of it. Someone did tell me, oh, they heard that you're not, you can't use Copics, meaning alcohol markers on uh, glossy cardstock and whatnot. So, um, to me, I say, why not? You know, and it certainly applies. They probably mean for certain types of looks, or maybe for like a real smooth kind of uh, application. But to me, the, I don't know, something like that doesn't really matter. I don't need something really smooth. I, I'd kind of like it to do what I want it to do, which is, for me on this piece, is to just apply in kind of a, a manner that um, I'm going after, which is variation in certain areas. I want to be able to apply it and to blend it out. Okay, so what I'm doing is I applied that green. Now I'm going in here a little bit and just kind of mixing it so it's like this this color and this one right next to each other okay um, let's add a little bit of orange okay let's add a hint of some kind of fall colors in that like that kind of warms it up right back in there doesn't it I think it might be Kind of more interesting if I just did this all in blue or something like that, real nighttime type of thing, but uh, I don't know. I, I could have. I think this was pushing the kind of the format and concept a little bit further by kind of moving out of just that bluish tinge and the bluish pinks down here, okay, a little bit more in our test here. Okay, now one of the things about 
alcohol inks is they it has that kind of separation kind of quality you know you can how you can take a a blender pen and just go back into it and start blending away well if you're doing it on glossy cardstock or on glossy photo paper if you get enough of a buildup of those you know those colors what i find is that if there's a you know a certain area that's like that and if i go back into it with another color like this it kind of starts to separate or puddle or remove the color that's already been laid down so i like the uh, that aspect that you can kind of go in here now see like when i'm putting a light color back into the darker one where i do that and i'm kind of pushing those colors out a little bit it starts to remove the color that's been laid down so if i'm doing it in an area that i want to be lighter i mean it won't get as light light it won't make that blue on the photograph white like that but it will get this color application as light as it can get so you can see right here i'm not actually using a blender pen you can use a blender i usually just use a lighter version of whatever color scheme is already laid down there and it's subtle but i do see that i'm kind of revealing a lighter area back in there see that oh, that kind of i don't know it's it's looking a little bit more kind of a uh, Twilight or sunset. I don't know. It's like the last light of twilight or something like that. I did lose a lot of that orange though, so I'm going back in now. And I'm going to, you know, kind of introduce some of that orangish tinge back into some of these areas, okay? And now it's not, it's going on a little bit rough, but that's the thing. You can just go back in with your blender and put that blending aspect right back into it. So it's a little bit light dark light 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 dark which may or may not be a good thing I, it might uh it might uh start to look a little bit overworked you know but for me that's how i do it because i can kind of get away get away with uh kind of my lack of uh color alcohol ink on this media experience see how it's kind of blobbed in there but then, you just go back in with a lighter tone. Let's go with uh, oh, something like this. This is sunlight yellow, okay? And you, what you do is you just blend these in. But you kind of push that around though a little bit, all right? So you can kind of take advantage and utilize that really kind of saturated tone, in this case red here, and then move it around a little bit And remove a little bit if you want to or spread or dilute by just going back into it with with a lighter version or your blender pen okay the lighter versions of whatever color you're doing act as a blender pen so I don't know I I, I do use the blender once in a while but usually not I, if I'm going to be using it's probably I don't know 10% of the time if that maybe it's because if I'm going back in with something like this this kind of color is kind of within the color scheme anyway so I might as well be applying some color rather than just clear you know that's my theory at least I don't I don't want things like completely obliterated. I, I want things, if I'm going in with a blender, it's just to kind of spread things out a little bit. It's not to remove or blend away something that I've already applied. It's just to make what I've already applied a little bit more graceful. Okay, there's that. Okay, now look at this right now. It's starting to come around in terms of my colors in the trees, right? But how do they look in relation to that bridge? The bridge looks a little more anemic, right? It's not as saturated, okay? I mean, you don't have to go with these colors on there, but I'm going to take some color and apply it to that bridge now, okay? 
This is a very light color right now. It's apricot, okay? Now that's not it. I'm just laying a la putting a layer down, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of work through some colors. Out of that color scheme, here's sepia, okay? I tested it out before I kind of apply it. You don't have to go completely uniform. These are planks of wood, so you can kind of go along with the, you know, the structure. Don't forget the inside of the uh, the bridge. That's really dark in there, so I'll just color it like that. And what I, what am I doing? I'm just kind of working through um, some values of the color scheme that that bridge represents. Okay. This one's pretty dark, so maybe this will just be kind of more in the shadows. Like underneath the eave there. It's a little bit too dark. I think some blending will be appropriate. Okay, so it's a little bit harsh right there. I'd say very harsh. So you just take that and go back on with your lighter tones, okay? Let's go back to that sepia. And just get that blended in a touch. You can bring some of this color out in the trees as well, just to give it the trees and the bridge something in common. Okay, is that a little bit of light on the roof? It's almost looking too cheery for that uh, sleepy hollow scene. I don't, I don't know, maybe it is. I don't know if they'd be out during the daytime. I don't know, maybe the, you know, maybe the headless horseman, right? He appreciates a good sunset just like anyone else, though, you know? If they're allowed to go out. You know, whatever kind of more forces or whatever. Applying the sepia down on some of this um, uh, road. You know, a little, little tone down there. See, it's all kind of becoming a little bit more related. This is a camel. Huh. Yeah, I don't know about that headless horseman on this one. I don't know if it makes sense. Let me take a look here. I don't know, that would be pretty cool though. <laughs> look at that, that. See that yellow, that orange pumpkin would really relate to those colors going on in the background. But if I put that there in the darkness. Hmm. I don't know. It's it's an option. But I don't know. That really looks like a nice um, twilight, I guess. It looks like that light, you know, is coming from the uh, that, you know, that period of day, which the photograph was of. It was of kind of a I'd say it's a little bit past sunset, but um, I don't know, pretty cool. Okay, so I just don't know if I could put that little mist on this one that I can't could here, because this one has white light, so if I put this little mist down there, it kind of makes sense. Let me try a little bit of it, because that is always kind of a, a really fun touch to uh, apply to a, a piece. If I do it, I'm just going to do it in a very super dry application. Yeah, I don't know. I can already tell it's kind of standing out in terms of that light because there are just that light really doesn't exist in here. In the in the photo, it was all kind of a warmer tinge 
you can go with man you might try a kind of a warmer tinge i don't know if i'd go with like yellow or something like that but see that right there it's a little mist it's eh, it's kind of magical mist though isn't it <laughs> you know if i'm doing that uh horseman It's like almost like the mist is coming out of that. Uh, uh, well, here, let me put a little bit of up up in here on the uh, the clouds too. Maybe if I, if I put some of it up in the clouds, then it'll kind of make more sense from uh, a lighting perspective. Lighting perspective in terms of the light from the sky illuminating um, some moisture in the air which is uh, aka fog okay now right now I'm just kind of putting it right around the tops of some of these trees yeah it looks pretty cool so that kind of it makes those trees look a little bit more like that cloud up there, doesn't it? In terms of the color scheme of it. And see, where I'm putting some of this pigment ink is right around the light on the horizon. Anyways, I hope this type of video is giving, uh, giving you some ideas for your uh, scenes in general. What I'm doing here, it's a little bit of a different process, of course, stamping on photos, right? And this is a very specific photo. But these same types of concepts apply. I would color things on white paper the same way. You would just have a little bit more to color because you're not starting off with something that's already so dark in the form of, you know, a photograph, so. Um, okay, let's try out some of these pens here. Uh, I'm choosing colors that are roughly the same as the color scheme. You have something like this, right? Happening in those trees. Yeah, that scene just does not look spooky to me, so I, I just don't know if I'm going to go, you know, sleepy hollow in it. Now that really stands out there because this is a yellow, um, yellow gel pen, but um, it's standing out a lot more than it does a lot of times when I use gel pens because I, I started with that photo again that was already fairly dark so by contrast when you put something light against it it will stand out as much as it is, uh, as much contrast as there is between it and whatever you're putting it on. So, in other words, you put a yellow dot on top of white and it, it's darker and it barely shows, right? Um, but this yellow over the top of black would really stand out, so it's all kind of, there's all kinds of variations of relative value. That, see that right there? See that's really how it's kind of shimmering. I have some of that light shining on it and I don't have so much shining on it in the darker areas. Okay, I'm, I'm applying more in the lighter areas because you're saying that light is hitting it, you know, more there than in other areas. So down here I'm not going to put any. Like down here, not yellow light because there's no light hitting it. But man, that gel pen looks really good on the top of, um, the, you know, photo photo stamping pieces I'm finding. it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe when I'm working on just white pieces of paper because I'm taking it so far from white to dark, maybe I don't go as dark as I, as what happens on photo stamping. Look at that. I mean, that was really bringing that to life, huh? Uh, doing this type of thing is so much fun, too. Um, if you're new to um, the channel, 
one of the things about um, gel pens that I've mentioned in the past is whenever anyone does this for the first time, it it feel it seems like, uh, and I'm including myself, that we position these dots like perfectly spaced with each other. Like everyone does it, and it's like always like an eighth or a quarter inch apart. There's just something to do with patterning in us. That's my theory, because when people start doing that and they hold it apart, it looks um, very, very uniform. And I kind of have to fight against that myself too, you know, even though I've been doing this. So anyways, what I'm doing is I'm tapering things. I'm putting a little bit more in the light. And then as I move away from the light, okay, um, like down here, see there's more on the top side of it. And then as I go down here, the dots are more space. See that right up there? Cluster and then nothing. Cluster. And see how I space it out like that. Okay? Yeah, this is... This is this is much too happy for a... a headless Horseman scene, I think. So I, I'm going to X that idea. Hey, you know, they say that... Uh, um, one potential definition of art is... Uh, it's what kind of takes place between the initial concept and the final result, so it changed. Maybe you're starting off with a, you know, a, uh, I don't know, a birthday card and through the process, it's a, uh, I don't know, turns into a, uh, a get well card or something, I don't know, or a winter, card, you know, Christmas card or something like that. You know, you start off and I'm going to go fall colors and suddenly it looks like more like winter to you or something. Uh, just go with it, you know, if it, if it just seems to want to be something else, then what you originally intended. As long as you have time to do another one. <laughs> okay, that was pink right there. You can't really see pink in there, right? But it's related to that red. Okay, so let's see. Let's take a look in here. Uh, let me see if I can get it. Oh, okay, here we go. Finally. Is that pink in there? It's kind of right in there, little dots here and there. I have a couple in here too. Uh, I don't have any down here. I, I guess I could. It's kind of got that pinkish um, color scheme from that twilight, right? That light. <sighs> okay, this is white. Now, I don't have too much white in here, like I said before, so I'm not going... Well, I'm going to say, I was going to say I'm not going to add too much of it, but we'll see. Who knows? If it looks good, eh, who cares? Just add it in there. You can put some of it up in your clouds, too, like it's... Capturing a little bit of light up there. Now see, I'm, I'm applying it where I've left some of the light, or I've retained some of the lighter areas, okay? Okay, look at that. It's a, I think it's a fairly rich looking surface. Okay, I'm going in and let me see if I have a gray um, gel pen. I, I might. The white really stands out quite a bit in here, as you can see. So I'm not sure if I have a gray or if these are metallics right here. I have a set of sh shuttle art. No, that's definitely silver. Boy, that's a good looking silver too. I'm not sure if I have gray. They have this I have this gigantic set of uh, gel pens, 
and uh, this one's glitter. This one has a glitter thing on oh, there. You can see the glitter on the barrel. I need some. I just need like a straight gray. Short of that, I'll just use like a lighter blue. But um, there's 180 colors in this set, and. I just don't see any gray. Okay, I apologize for the. No, yeah, that's not. That's another glitter. I don't, I don't know how they. They. I barely used a lot of these pens in this set, and uh, I'm not quite sure how they arranged them because all the glitter is not together and whatnot. I never really, really rearranged them because it comes with 180 uh, refills, and I just didn't want to. Uh, kind of mix them up too much if the refills were right next to it. I thought it'd be really difficult to tell which one's which too, so. But when I took a look at them, I thought, no, oh, it's pretty apparent which refill goes with which pen, so. All right, so I'm putting a little bit of this blue down here. as little highlights. So instead of, you know, like a colored one down here. There's blue down in this scene, so I'm highlighting with blue because we're saying that kind of that's the color of light just in general in that area. All right, so I put a little bit of this blue out here. Okay, just to create a certain continuity. I don't want, it's not like we're saying, hey, there's a bunch of blue trees everywhere. All right, okay. All right, now let's just simply put in some foreground and we'll call it a scene. I would have been doing a little bit more had there been a, a headless aspect of things, just standard die based inks right here. And we do have a road coming down here, so So I won't stand too much in front of the road. I'll kind of see I'm kind of tilting this with each impression. Light, even impressions, okay? It doesn't show up right here too much because it's dark against kind of a darker area, right? Okay. And how about, I was going to use my spooky branch, but I'll use my uh, oak branch. Right in here, just to create kind of a, a compositional framing device up top. And it kind of creates depth in the scene, too. Um, I do have a lot of um, photographs in my Flickr cloud album that anyone's free to download and print out. Um, and it, I do have some um, high elevation shots, you know, looking down across the landscape and whatnot. And I don't know, it's even better if you know how to kind of manipulate photos in like Photoshop or any kind of graphics program where you might, if you want to, you can kind of uh, decrease the saturation if you want to or something like that if you want to um, have a little bit more of a kind of a, a neutral background to work on, meaning there's not such high levels of um, stark contrast within the piece. But, I don't know, this is an experiment for that, and I'd say, uh, I don't know, I'd say it looks fairly interesting in terms of the, the final result. So, 
here's a photograph. Can you, I don't know, can you see the photograph still in here? You kind of, I mean, you kind of can. I mean, there's the, the clouds down there, of course. And you can see the transition of the sky back there. And there's that other color of sky up there with the clouds. I don't know, it looks fairly interesting to me. And, I mean, this is a color scheme and a lighting scheme that I never would have come up with on my own. I mean, I could. I could replicate this type of thing, but I usually wouldn't have this hard bar of blue going across down here. And, you know, that type of thing. But I think it's very effective. And here's this big dark cloud right back there, too. And it looks like it goes up here, too. And, you know, there's a little bit of blue. So we're kind of working around that, of course. Or we are very much working around um, those types of uh, parameters. But... I don't know. I think it you it can meet with some really good results in the most cases so far. I don't know. I I'm playing around with this, but to me this really looks like a you know a twilight sunset type of thing, and it ju it's just interesting to me that that's the time of day that that photograph was taken. So that even when I've colored over all this area right in here and. You, it's really hard to tell um, the, uh, the you know the the original color in that area. I think this area in here still reflects the color of that um, time of day or the lighting of it to be more specific. Okay, now I was looking down here as I was kind of blabbing away, but let's go with the, this. Looks like water down here, and it could be water on the road or something like that. Looks like after the rain or something like that. I'm just going to add in a few of these rocks down here. It's called tiny rocks. Eh, something like that. It still looks like a little bit of water, but that's okay. So I water on my road. Okay. All right, so a lot of fun stuff, and I'm finding out new things all the time. I'm starting to run out of photographs, so I'll have to move on, or I'll print out some of my own ones, and uh, maybe play around with them, maybe grade them where it's not color, it's black and white, and we can do uh, other things with that type of uh, format. Okay, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed the scene. Photo stamping can be very, very fun and uh, kind of having to work with a certain parameter, meaning kind of existing forms in the background, stamping it over with open designs. Again, you know, it's very easy to use just, you know, solid trees or something like this in a photo stamping. Then you don't have to kind of work around, you know, kind of, you know, the dark light um, kind of considerations within the photograph. But, you know, after you do a couple of these, you start to see kind of a little bit more of the possibilities um, in conjunction with um, whatever stamps you want to use with it. So it's really fun, and it's fun seeing what will come out, um, you know, from something that you didn't have control over from start to finish, you know, as in working on a white piece of paper to the final result. And I'm finding that's really fun, and uh, I don't know. I don't think any creativity is lost. In fact, it might kind of, uh, kind of spur, you know, your creative energy to uh, kind of come up with um, different solutions that you normally wouldn't have had you not been working within that given parameter. So thanks again for watching. Thanks for tuning into the channel. If you like this video, hope you like, share, and subscribe.